Beloved, you are listening to Grace Life Comey Podcast, a platform commissioned by God to raise men into completeness in Christ Jesus. We believe that you will be blessed beyond measure as you give yourself wholly to this divinely inspired teaching. Through God's servant Pastor Chimdi Ohahuna. Grace to you, Jesus is Lord. um, we are still learning, and in this third we've been um, we been looking at uh, we looking at we been looking at um, three major things to take into consideration. Um, the sheep gates, which we are by the help of the Holy Spirit been able to do some little um, study on it, and um, we are looking now at the pool of Bethesda, the pool of Bethesda. Amen to Jesus. Amen. And I'm going to that the pool has five porches. Praise God for the Lord. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. And I'm so we are still on the pool of Bethesda. We understood in our last study the pool of Bethesda plays a very important role in this miracle of Jesus, and we understood that the pool was initially known as the sheep pool, which was a pool where the animals that were the sheep that were um, to be used for sacrifice, when they came from the sheep market through the sheep gates, they were washed in the sheep pool and then taken into the temple for what was sacrifice. Amen to Jesus. So as it were, it was not a clean. Amen to Jesus. It was as it were a pool where um um animals were washed. And if you know that these animals would be dirty because you know they are just coming from the you know from the um from the sheep market, so they're gonna be dirty, but it's not very So it was not really very beautiful and hygienic as it were pleased to hang around. Amen to Jesus. Praise God for the Lord. And um, it, it makes us understand um, that this pool was was not the cozy place are we together. And um, um, this uh, and in this pool, the number of sick people, the number of invalid people, the number of um, and paralyzed people held around the pool, praise God for the Lord, um, to be healed. Because um, as as we we have seen in the study thus far, that the pool was still an angel. You know, and we have got into the pool first was in. So now it was a pool where um animals were washed and a pool that was also stayed. So now the people who had to be healed, they had to jump into let us say in dirty water. Amen to Jesus. And in a, a water where animals were washed, they had to jump into that water. Praise God forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Alright, and that was the kind of pool that the um the, the pool of Bethesda was. Amen. And um, this reminds me of one story in the Old Testament. One story in the Old Testament. It reminds me of one story in the Old Testament. Glory to God forevermore. And that is the story that we should all know. is the story of Naaman. Amen to Jesus. When Elisha the prophet sent him to go wash at the pool, at, at the river of Jordan. And he began to complain, stating that, you know, are there no better rivers in our where I come from? You know, and he began to name the rivers. And the rivers are cleaner than this Jordan. Why should I go to this dirty Jordan to go what? To go wash myself. Praise God forevermore. And he asked but these men who stood at the pool of Bethesda, they knew that in a matter of um, life and death, you do not mind what you have to do just to what save your life praise god forevermore now in a situation where they have to get healed at all costs they never would mind what they have to do just to get healed praise god forevermore and so if it has to be washing in a dirty pool they never mind they, they, they never minded washing in a dirty pool just to get what healed this makes us understand what desperation can do Amen to Jesus. Amen. Makes us understand that until people get to a desperate point in life, they may never take desperate steps to get what? Desperate what? Results. And so that just makes us understand something. All right. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah, Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. And um, we we understood um, quite a lot about the sheep gate in our last lesson. Amen to Jesus. Amen. All right. And we also understood that this, what, this, this, um, this pool was meant for 
invalids was meant for the people that were blue class or never people who want to be healed and you know the as it were the people who with their lives were messed up praise god forevermore so it was not a place that the cozy people the classic people we go to now and we understand that this spoon actually symbolizes the baptism of jo um, um, john the baptist to jesus which was a baptism meant for sinners that jesus had to suffer it to be so why because he had to what fulfill all righteousness praise god forevermore Hallelujah. now this was a pool that the everyday man will not want to go into the classic people will not know if i let me say what the average man will not want to go into such a pool the, are we together yes. let's know the classic people they will not want to go into such a pool now but it was it, it, it was a pool that people who are in messed up situation who have no other option amen, amen. they are the ones who go into such a pool and jesus came to that pool to meet this man to make him understand something this was not just a message to the man but to the message to us praise god forevermore hallelujah, hallelujah to jesus yes. praise god forevermore and we understood that message last week and today we're going to be going through something i feel is very important for us quickly so that we can understand more to the pool of bethesda amen to jesus yes. now uh, today we're going to be looking at the history of the pool of bethesda and its application in this miracle the history of this pool of bethesda and its application in what in this miracle now um, I, I discovered that one of the challenges over the years we have had in the church is that we don't know the history of many things so we just take them hook line and sinker and on another on other occasions since we don't know the history some of the times we mystify things and we we, we, we let me say glorify and exalt things that we are not meant to give such so much you know accolades glorification and exaltation amen to jesus amen. so it's very important that as much as possible as we can we should get into histories of things in scriptures so we can be able to understand in a clearer point of view how to apply things in um in our lives praise god forevermore hallelujah to us now we must understand that everything that jesus did he did to fulfill something are we together when he's fulfilling, he's fulfilling the law. Are you get what I'm saying? Now we understood how this pool of Bethesda was the fulfillment of the law which Jesus did the battle of John the Baptist last in last in our last study. Are we together? Right. Now, so he when he does something, he does it to either fulfill something or to work or to correct something. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, so most of the time we are we able to say, ah, but Jesus spat on saliva and he spat, I am spat on um, clay and makes it, you know, and he put it on the eyes of the man and told the man to go and wash. And we have people that have arguments to that effect on how you can you have to use mediums and every other tokens and as they will say, praise God forevermore. But now one of one of the things I've learned over the years is to go into the historical concept of these things. When you go to the historical comes you discover that many of the things that Jesus did, all the things that Jesus did, they were either to fulfill something or to correct something. And when he's correcting, what is he correcting? He's actually correcting by pointing it to himself, pointing man to himself. Are you getting what I'm saying? When he's fulfilling, he's ensuring that he's fulfilling the law so that it can begin. Bible says Christ is the end of the world of the law. Are we together? He's the end of the law. And you know, when we have issues of I remember when I was talking with somebody and it was like, oh, the first church, they worshipped us on, 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 on Saturday and everyone, and it was going, going with the argument. And I understand, and I was like, all right, I, I, I don't want, I don't, I don't argue with you and I'm not against you. I mean, together. But all of, when, I, when I meet people, one thing I always try to make people understand is that Christ is the end of the law. Are we together? Yes. Now, so Christ, did, Jesus did not begin a religion, but he fulfilled the law. He ended the law by fulfilling it. He didn't begin a religion. Jesus didn't begin a religion, but Jesus is our worship. Amen to Jesus. Amen. Right. Now, so Christ being the end of the law, it basically makes us understand that, as Apostle Paul said, it is, it, we should not be judged by deeds. Are we together? Yes. Or by what we eat or what we don't eat. Because in Christ, it's liberty. Amen to Jesus. In Christ, Christ, Christ has set us free from the, um, um, uh, from the law, law of sin and death now so in christ we must understand the liberty that christ has given to us and not be held bound by any kind of bondage praise god forevermore Hallelujah. any kind of bondage and when that comes into play we will understand that more often than not when christ pointed corrected things it was because he was trying to point things to him point man to him point everything back to him and so you ask is there a day that is set aside for worshiping the Lord? Christ is the day set aside. Are we together? Yes. And that's why we worship Him in spirit and in truth. 
So must we have a day fixed? Christ is our day. Are you getting what I'm saying? And as you walk with Christ, you will know the day. Praise the Lord forevermore. Now, so, that, that, I'm just bringing that up to make us understand that Christ is the end of the law and he's the fulfillment of the law and he's the beginning of our righteousness and the end of our righteousness. So, everything that Christ did, he fulfilled, he did to either fulfill or to what? Point to him. Amen. So, if we are, if we want to really understand the operations of scriptures, because from the Old Testament to the New Testament, it reveals Christ. In the Old Testament, Christ is revealed in a concealed manner, which is what? In, 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 in types and symbols. In the New Testament, He's revealed in His glory. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Praise God forever. Yes. Now, so everything that is to be done is to be done on the grounds of what Christ did concerning that matter. On that matter, did Christ fulfill it as a law, a requirement of the law, or did Christ come? To point us to him on that matter instead of us what focusing on that issue. Are we together? And that's the basic way we can actually understand the scriptures. If he has fulfilled it as a requirement of the law, then we don't need to go over that again. Now, if he is if he came and he pointed us to himself, not that thing, then we should not focus on that thing. We should look unto Jesus. Amen to Jesus. Amen. And this is very important to us because the church has to really wake up to this reality. It's going to help us a great deal. So looking at the history of the, uh, uh, of the Pool of Bethesda and its application in this miracle. Now the Pool of Bethesda dates back to the Hellenistic period in Jerusalem and gets its origin from the same period. Amen to Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Now, in this period, the ancient Greek had and believed in the pagan god of healing named Asclep Asclepion. Asclepion. So the, the Greeks, they had a god, a deity, an idol. Are you getting what I'm saying? Who they believe was a god of healing. Now, just like, let's not take it too far. Let's not take it too far. Even in the African settings, we have different deities we believe in. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are deities that they believe that they are god of thunder. They are gods that they are the gods that give children. Are you getting what I'm saying? When you come into just only one tribe, one one tribe, sorry, one tribe, just only one tribe, it's good that that tribe has different deities they believe in. There's a deity that believe that, that they believe in that it has to do with justice and judgment. Then there's a deity they believe that when you want to have children, you go to that deity for children. Now, when you want to, there's a deity they believe that when you want to have healing on it, when you're sick, you go to that. So these things are not new. Let's not make them look like they are new. I what I'm saying now. Um, I remember I was watching um, one of the um, the 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 um, 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 the matters of faith. Are you get what I'm saying? And then in the ancient Greek, when he was telling them about when he, he as a Christian, the the the, the 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 emperor told him, "You can you, you cannot you, you guys cannot be Christians. You must serve the emperor." And the and the, and he said, "I serve only God." And he said, "You cannot serve only God. There is no one God." We have many gods. So the Greek believe that they have many gods. And each god has its designation. So how can you collapse all these gods together and now put it in one god? This was their major challenge. That is why they had a major problem with the Christians. Because the Christians, what they worship, who the Christians worship is one god that the Greeks believe they have collapsed all their gods together and put it in one god. Now, it's not only the Greeks. We, every every go through go through go through every 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 national every nation every tribe they are they can, they don't assign one god to everything it's in the mindset of man that one person cannot be everything <laughs> praise god forevermore mm -hmm. and so for you to call for you to say you serve one god it became a challenge to them so the greek had a god that he believed was the god of healing are you get what i'm saying and it was called asclepion now, as a result of this, during the peak of the Greek um, Empire, they built Asclepos. They built Asclepos, or what they call healing centers, with pools all across the Greek Empire. I know that Jerusalem then was under the Greek Empire. Now, so since they believed in the Asclepion, who was their god of healing, they built healing centers around. Are we together? Yes. 
Praise God forevermore. The great, the great healing center. See, that's why I say most of the times we have to be very careful as Christians. Are you getting what I'm saying? So that we don't carry a an idolatrous ideology and put it into Christianity. The, the Christian faith has had a lot of battering from different idolatrous ideologies. Are you getting what I'm saying? And what we must do is we must as New Testament says, new creations, follow through history to trace things back to Christ and not carry many of the many of the baggages of idolatry that have been given to us. Here. Yeah. We must not carry the baggages of idolatry that have been given to us. Now, my job is not to go into church history here. Are you getting what I'm saying? But our job should be, as Christians, to go into history and ensure that as much idolatry we can remove from our, our our relationship with God, we have to remove them. Because when the devil succeeds in making our focus removed from Christ, then we are entering into idolatry. And the Bible makes us understand, looking all to Jesus. The word looking there in the Greek means remove your focus from something and put the other thing. So, when we are looking unto Jesus, it doesn't mean, it, another, uh, another synonym that explains looking unto Jesus means fix your gaze. Are you get what I'm saying? When we are looking unto Jesus, we cannot use one eye to look at him and another eye to look at another thing. Are you get what I'm saying? No matter you can, your focus must be on one at a point in time. When your two eyes are focused on one, one object at a point in time. If you have to remove focus from that object, your two eyes remove focus on another word, object. We cannot use one eye to focus on something by our right and use another eye to focus on something by our word, by our left. And that's what the devil has been trying to do to us. And that's why he brings in idolatrous concepts into the church. So we are unknown to, unknown to us practicing idolatry and thinking we are serving the Lord Christ. And it's a serious challenge in the church. Because some of the time we don't even know the root of some of these things. And we carry this baggage of idolatry and we move on with it. And we don't know the root. And you cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot focus on Christ and focus on the devil at the same time. Is that your focus is on Christ and the devil is not your focus? Or your focus is the devil and Christ is not your focus? And that's the reason why historical concepts have to be brought back into the church. And we have to do it. We have to go back into what? The original blueprint. Are we together? Yes. If something has a Judas foundation, I will not fight it so much. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because Judaism, whether we like it or yes, gave birth to Christianity. Are we together? Christ Jesus was a practicing Judaism. He fulfilled the law. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. But when it is outside the Judaic practice, I fight it like crazy. Are you get what I'm saying? Because it is total, totally out of the out of the history. Are you get what I'm saying? And even if it has a Judaic practice, and we Christ has fulfilled it, and we are trying to pursue what He has fulfilled, we are overburdening ourselves. Are you get what I'm saying? Once He has fulfilled it, don't no need to fulfill it. Go to one, go by it again. It's just like you making trying to make atonement for your sin. He has made atonement. All the ten commandments, he collapsed them in one. That shall not be Lord thy God, and, and with all thy heart, with all thy might, and with all thy soul, and that shall not be thy neighbor as thyself. Go through the whole ten commandments that were broken into thousands of laws. He command, he just collapsed it into one law. So, and that's the law of love. So, why go and try to start the whole, he reinvent the whole wheel when Christ has fulfilled it and given you his love? Because he is now love at work in you. So why go and revenge? Are you getting what I'm saying? But when it goes out of this and you start going, then it becomes very detrimental. Praise God forevermore. So they had healing pool. They had healing centers all around their empire. Everywhere they had, uh, where the empire covered. Are you getting what I'm saying? They had healing centers. And in these healing centers, they were what? They were pools. <laughs> they were pools. They were pools. In every, in every of the healing center, they were pools. In all of the healing centers. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Including Jerusalem. Because Jerusalem was part of, was under the empire. Are you getting what I'm saying? So they had healing centers everywhere, including Jerusalem. So when they pull up the stairs that day, it was part of the, <laughs> it was part of the pools. We are not looking at the pool of Siloam. They were the pools. And this was the history. 
Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. See people who wanted to be healed visited these centers. Are you getting what I'm saying? They visited these centers. They took a bath in the pool. Are you getting me? They drank the water and slept inside the walls. You see how serious the matter was. So those who were sick then and they wanted to heal, they would come to this pool. <laughs> when I see when I see some Christians do some things, I laugh. They come to this pool. They bath in the pool. They drink the water from the pool. Now, so imagine this kind of pool that we all bathing inside. We now drink the water too. That's right. Amen. It's well. And then sleep in the walls. Amen to Jesus. Now it was believed that if they did this, ask Alpon, ask Alpion, or his serpents would possibly visit the ill person in a dream and give them hints about their healing. See serious matters. <laughs> you know, I saw I, I saw um, a, a church where they said they had pull off. But there's, and they were paying money, big money for people to come to that pool. I don't know if the pool is in operation. <laughs> you know what so, see, some people don't just understand. You, because of your ignorance, eh? You, as, a, as a minister of the gospel, you will expose your people to demonic operations. See the root of the pool here. Yeah. I get what I'm saying. It was simply demonic. And you as a pastor, you just say pulling of the test that they were getting hit. Oh, yeah, let us do pulling of our church. You don't know this. when you do something in line with a history that is not Christ centered, you attract the deities, the forces, the demons that invented it in to get into your into your system. You give them a room and you cannot say no. I get what I'm saying. You cannot do what they invented and say they will not take charge of it. It's not possible, sir. You are doing what they invented and you said they will not take charge. They will take charge. You only open a room for them to have access into your people. And you begin to see things happen. You begin to wonder why. So many of the, the, many of the healings that some people have gotten sometimes, they say they went to a pool to bath. They don't know who, who gave them the healing. And let me tell you, don't forget something. The devil counterfeits everything that God does. So they are counterfeit healings also. Are you getting what I'm saying? They are counterfeit healings. So we have to wake up and, and check histories before we start jumping at this. I know the church is a very Christians are very wonderful people. And Mr. of are very wonderful people. Everybody can hear God. Every Mr. Apostle, the Lord just gave me an instruction. And sometimes, when we see the instruction that God gives to some people, you wonder how they got the instruction. They will tell you they just speak scriptures and they just got the instruction. But you don't, you see, when you begin to understand scriptural history, you know that God does not speak anyhow. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. You know that God does not speak anyhow. Because the way we hear God anyhow is because we are not Bible students. Mm. And we don't even study biblical history. So we hear God anyhow. And sometimes the things we are hearing, it is well. We don't know if it is God we are hearing. No. I'm not here to judge anybody. Are we together? Yes. Praise God forevermore. Yeah. At the time when Jesus lived, the belief that Asclepion and his serpent churned the waters of the natural pools and springs persisted in Jerusalem. Are you get what I'm saying? Mm. So when Jesus was living on earth, eh, they believed that that as that Asclepion and his serpents they churned the water. Mm. <laughs> it was a Greek shame belief. Are you get what I'm saying? Yeah. I, 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 so, this pool of Bethesda is a serious matter. Let me see what a very serious matter of controversy. Are you getting me? That was why Jesus had to step in. It was a very serious matter of controversy. So they were, they, they believed that Asclepius and his serpents were what, and his serpents were what they were stirring the water. Praise God forevermore. Why others believed it was an angel who did this? Are we together? Yes. It's a serious matter. So there were two sides to the to the beliefs. There were two divides. There were people who believed that this water bubbling, the water stirring, was done by Asclepion and his and his what serpents. Why well, there were some others who believed that it was an angel who stirred the water. Are we together? Yes. Now, on the other hand, now look at the third side to it. That's why Jesus had to enter the matter. <laughs> I get what I'm saying. See, well, let our focus be Jesus. The church should stop focusing on many things. Let's just focus because 
Let me tell you, the reason why we have a lot of arguments in the church is because Jesus is not our focus. When Jesus is our focus, all the arguments will fade away. There was one side that were believing that it was um, Asclepion and the serpents that were selling, that was, that, that they were the ones selling the water. Another side, they were believing that it was what? It was, a, it was an angel that was selling the water. And now, on the other hand, based on archaeological discoveries, some natural factors revealed that this belief was what? A superstition. Are you getting me? So, the beliefs on both sides, nature, some natural factor, based on archaeological facts, reveal that the beliefs on both sides were just superstitious. They were merely what? Superstitious beliefs. Christians, wake up. Wake up. Most of us have run with superstitions as Christians over the years. We're not us that are working with superstitions. Christianity is not superstition. Are you getting what I'm saying? The works of God are not superstition. They are real and factual. Are you getting what I'm saying? They are real. They are spiritual. Are you getting me? They are not superstitious. God is not a superstition. That's why you need to study. Are you getting what I'm saying? Praise God forevermore. Now, the reason why they believe that it was superstition is because this pool of Bethesda was supplied water by a fountain under it, which made it not run out of water. Are we together? When the fountain supplies water to the pool, it creates a bubbling and stirring, which they believed to be an angel or a scorpion or a serpent. Are we, are we seeing something here? Are you seeing something here? Are you getting something here? Have you seen something here? Now, while the Greeks believed that when the water was bubbling, it was Asclepion and his serpents that were stirring the water, and the, 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 Jew, the, the, the Jews believed that it was an angel that was stirring the water, are we together? Now, now we, we, we've been in a Commanding the um, go forward conference, and we understood that when God speaks through science, He speaks through science that we true science that we understand. For the for the wise men, they were astrologers, they were star readers, star readers, star readers, and star gazers. Are you get what I'm saying? They could they still read the firmament, and God spoke to them of the birth of a king of his child of his son through what they could understand as astrologers. When it came to the shepherds, they were Jews, and Jews believed so much in angelic ministry. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? He spoke to them through what? Angels, because that's what they could understand. Now, we can see here that while the Greeks were believing that it was Asclepion and his serpent that was stirring the water for healing purpose, the Jews believed that it was what? An angel, because they understand the angelic operation. Mm. That's what they understand. They understand the angels. Why the Greek don't understand the angels? They understand what? Asclepion. In the midst of this confusion, light superstition. Because, from a theoretical point of view, the water, the, the pool, was supplied water by a fountain. That was why the water never ran dry. And due to earth movement and natural operations, <laughs> And we all know that there are you see the sea, there are earth movements, and due to earth movements and natural natural operations, there will be stairs in the pool. So now, from a theological point of view, that means both Greek believers and Jewish believers were wrong. <laughs> they were just living and working with superstition. And I tell you. The devil is a master of clamping down on superstition. When you are not knowledgeable, the devil uses it to penetrate you. So the question here is this. If we are using archaeology and nature to answer the question that we have here. If truly people stepped into the water and they were healed, was it God who healed them? Are you getting what I'm saying? Was he an angel who actually healed them? Was it God who said, was it God who healed them? Because if it was just an archaeological and natural um, earth movement, that means it was an angel that was sending the water. Neither was it Asclepion and his servant that was sending the water. So if they got healed, who healed them? Are you getting what I'm saying? And these are the things that many times Christians don't understand. The devil, once he knows that you are ignorant, he takes advantage of your ignorance. And they capitalize on it like no man's business. 
So, some people have opened themselves to demonic uh, possession because of ignorance. Yeah. Because they, because of ignorance, they just been possessed. And the devil, they say ignorance of ignorance, no excuse. The devil will not, will, not, will not listen to the fact that you are ignorant. He just catches on it. Are you not saying? Hey. <laughs> so you can imagine how many people that might have come there and they said they were healed. And it was neither an angel that said the pool, neither was it a serpent and his what? Serpent that said the pool. Rather, it was a natural you know, thing that just happened. And many people also believe, uh, based on the fact that it was a natural thing that happened, um, people are meant, uh, um, some um, Bible scholars are meant to believe that what happened to them was a psychological, <laughs> a psychological activity. So, psychologically, since some believe that that's Lepion and his serpent were the ones telling, why some believe that it was angel and that, that, in the recess it was neither a Lepion, his serpent, nor an angel. It was just a natural operation. Because their psychology has been fine-tuned to that, when they go into the pool, they have a psychological relief. <laughs> Psychological relief. So it possibly means that they could just feel a psychological relief at that point in time. Maybe by the time they get home, the sickness enters on that dimension. Secondly, the devil could also take advantage of such situations and manipulate people's lives, possess people, and destroy destinies. Now, so we can see what was happening in the pool of Bethesda. Are we together? Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah, Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. 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 All right. Mm. <laughs> oh, sh. Now, so, basically, the Greek influence in Jerusalem then made these pools in the city popular spot for the sick or disabled to visit or to stay near. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, there were pools because of the Greek influence. There were pools like this. And sick people, disabled people, um, 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 people that were you know paralyzed, they stood, they stayed near the water, and they were staying near the pools with superstition. See, the purpose of the minister of the gospel, the Bible says, Second Timothy 2 15, story to show thyself approved unto God, unto God, a workman we needed not to be ashamed of service. What rightly dividing the word of truth. Our duty as students of the world, as ministers of the gospel, is to rightly divide so we don't pack people and jam them and give them different dimensions of superstition. Because what sometimes we see in church is different dimensions of superstition. That's what is taught from the altar. They are giving that we are teaching them different dimensions of superstition unknown to us. And we are making their life more complicated. Are we together? Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Glory to God forevermore. Hallelujah. And so people stood by the pools with superstitious, you know, mindset concerning these pools. Amen to Jesus. So they believed that if they could enter the pool where the bubbles and ripples rose to the surface of it, that was the best time for them to get healing miracles. Hmm. Now, so if you are, if you are, if so far that we have looked at the history, we discover that this actual pool had no history from scriptures. I get what I'm saying. Even from the Judaic practice, it had no history. Are we together? Are we together? It had no history. Praise God for more. Go through the Old Testament. I get it. I get what I'm saying. It's only once that Elisha sent Naaman to go and wash at the pool. After that, was there any situation of go and get healed at the pool? Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. Because for something to be taken as a precedence, it has to be something that has been done over and again. So we can see that this pool idea, this pool, this medical pool idea has no roots from the scriptures. I'm not talking about the Torah. I hear what I'm saying. 
It was people's figments of superstitious imaginations. And it was greatly influenced by the Greek ideology of Asclepion <laughs> and his serpent. So question, that means if the Greek had not, they didn't bring their... I, see, let me tell you what... Let me find out how to say. If the Greek had not brought their ideology of Asclepion, are you get what I'm saying, and his serpent, and the Asclepos that they created, which were healing centers with pools, if they are not brought into Jerusalem, there is a likelihood that the people of Israel will not have started believing that the pool was still by nature. So what was the root of this, this, this I, 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 way of thinking? It was what? A pagan root. <laughs> Are we together? It was a pagan root. So please, Christians, we must be careful and go back to scripture to ensure that we are not worshipping something we don't know. Paul walked in the book of Acts and he came to he came to what city was that? And he saw a group of people in a temple and they were so vibrant and serious. And on the temple they wrote to an unknown God. Christians, we have to go back to scriptures and ensure that we are not worshipping an unknown God. <laughs> because the confusion of the pool of Bethesda came as a result of the influence of the Greek on the Jews. And if that influence did not come, nobody would be hanging around with you. When Elisha sent, sent Naaman to go and watch, the people after Naaman watched, we never heard that people said they hanging around Jordan to watch. See, we need to, and that's what happens when we bring religion, tradition into a practice. The spirit of 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 um of religion has a paganist ideology attached to it. I get what I'm saying. And the purpose of it is to keep you in bondage so you can express the liberty of Christ. <laughs> Because you cannot put Jesus in a straight jacket, sir. He spat on the floor and he hit and, and, and mixed it with mixed the clay with his saliva and went and gave it to the man and, and rubbed it to the man and said, Man, wow, well, was that the only way Jesus hit blind? When blind man was asked him to be, what did he say? Receive your sight, blah blah blah, you give his sight. So now, if one want to start spitting on the ground, that means nobody will say, Receive your sight again. Look at the miracles of Jesus. His miracles were basically by his word. Are you getting what I'm saying? And when, we, when he began to use a medium, a, 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 a medium, we need to understand the ideology behind that. When time comes, when we get to that miracle, are you getting what I'm saying? We'll study why he did that. The reason why Christians we have is because we don't study you. We are very, we are, we are people that are very, very, very ignorant. We don't study. So you see argument left, right, and center. Because you don't study. When you study, you will not be angry. We see people doing pools in churches now. Pools, pools not baptism pool, no. not baptist pool, pool. Pool. You want to not come to wash inside pool and not take the water and drink. Hey, you are, you are practicing asclepioism. <laughs> you are practicing asclepioism, and I pray serpents will not appear to you. Amen. It's a matter the serpent does not, to come, does not to come as a serpent. The devil must create an angel of light. He used to, the Asclepian used to use serpent, but this no, no wonder the devil did what he did in this matter because knows that there are some <laughs> exposed ones that want to come out. And I saw this, I said, Ooh, ah, Christians, we have to wake up. We have to wake up. Let it not be said that we have been worshipping an unknown God. Let it not be said that we have imported idolatry into our system unknown to us. The devil hates when you do such revelations because he knows that if he can blindfold us more, he say we are not fully blind, we are just half blind. If you are half blind, it's fine. I get what I'm saying. Because from half blindness, we get into full blindness. So people have turned into native doctors. On suit, and people and Christians will pursue them, and they tell you. I remember I was talking to somebody, and it was like, you know, they said, and I, we're trying to make them understand. I see, you don't use medium just like that. You know, everything you, if I told you, say you want to go then let it be. Ah, it was a, it was a pastors' um, for, uh, um, association, 
and they brought somebody who said he was using something to pray for people, pregnant women, using something to pray for them, using something to, uh, something to pray for women so that they will, they will become pregnant. And we said, two of us in the in the um, in the association said these things are not New Testament oriented. That the other pastor, he, 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 his church was not big, but I discovered that he was somebody who was grounded in the, in, in the New Creation reality. You get what I'm saying? We told them these things are not New Testament. Oriented. I said, if I told you have to do it, you know, no problem, no fight, but use something that has New Testament. And the leader of the association said, hey, but after all, you know, they said that. Well, he said, in fact, one bishop like that uses stones. He said, hey! He said, they say, after all, anything you put into your hand, you, are, you can convert it and use it to pray. I say, hey, hey. Hey, so people will be using a um, cowrie. <laughs> Christian society using cowrie to pray. Say, after all, anything that enter your hand, convert it to, to what? To supernatural medium. We use cowrie. What else again we use? Um, we use animal blood, self. Very soon, we'll be having packaged babalawos Packaged the nurse, packaged witch doctors in suits, leading the people, and the people we are setting. But we're just learning something here. And the church, we have seen people that build pools, we have seen people that don't pools. You don't know the history of the pool. Oh, exposing your people to satanic influences. Because when you do something that the devil originated, you are giving full access to your life. <laughs> Uh, some of them are drinking the water, self. Some of them are, 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 are using the water to cook food. You know, I, I, I cash typhoid in Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. Now, if someone could not lower himself into the pool, the people then believe that it meant the person will not be healed. Ah, this is not God. This is not God. This cannot be God. I get what I'm saying. That's how Jesus came to meet the man. Because the God we serve is not a God that makes you get healing by your works. The God we serve is not a God that makes you get miracles by your works. The God we serve is a God that has given to us freely all things by His grace. We are not getters, we are receivers. In this style of healing, you have to get it by your works. You have to get it by your energy. Are you getting what I'm saying? You have to work it out. Are you get what I'm saying? And that's this kind of miracle, that's kind of healing. But that is not the kind of healing that God gives to us. The healing that God gives to us, He has given us freely by His gift. In fact, the Bible says He took, He took, He took, He took, He took our pains. Ah, without our permission. Without seeking our consent. Ah, He took our pains. That tells you how much He wants us to have the healing. He took our pain without seeking our consent. Then, I have to now lower myself into the water for me to get it. No, that is contrary to God. That is contrary to Yahweh. That is contrary to Jesus. Yahweh takes your pain even without your permission. For God commended his love towards us even that while we are yet seen as Christ that the only thing that God forced on us without our permission is his love. And that is love was the same reason why he took our page without our permission. Even if you like it, he takes it. He has taken it. It's left for you to receive the truth that he has taken it. But when you have to work it out, when you have to lower yourself down, if not, if you don't lower yourself, when the water bubbles, if you are not the first, hey, God is not a kanu kanu God. Oh. We are not serving a God that does a um, gambling. He's not a gambler. He's not a gambler. First come, first serve. That's what the God is saying. That means you mean that this this food makes it reveals a limited God. Mm. Now only has miracle for the first man. Oh no, no, that's what this food re reveals. A limited God that only has miracle for the first man. I get what I'm saying. So after the first man, no miracle again to the next season. Oh God. That's what this food reveals. But that's what the God we serve. The God we serve, serve is rich in mercies. Ah, oh, you're not all shaka. He's rich in mercies. He's rich in mercies. He's rich in mercies. Surplus supplies of mercy. Superfluous supply of mercy. So if a million people come into him today, if a million people come for healing today, he healed them. That's what the Bible says. And Jesus came. And all the people that came to him, he healed them all. That's what Jesus was coming to reveal to them in Bethesda. 
That is not me. Hey! You are trying to tell this is not me. What you are doing here is not me. I don't heal only the first man. That means the, the person that you say is healing you, he's short of healing. He's short of supply of healing. He only has one healing for a day. Come on. But that's not Jesus. Jesus walking through. He sees the woman with the issue of blood while he's on the journey. She touches the hem of his garment and she's healed. And the centurion comes and says, My child is at the point of death. And he says, Your child even. That's the same Jesus. In just one day, he's moving and he's healing. He's doing good. How God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good. And God was with him. Hallelujah. He doesn't have one healing for a day. Mm. <laughs> one healing for a season. So after the, the water is churned, after the water is churned, we don't know the next time the water will be churned. Mm. So nobody gets healed to the next time. That's not Jesus. Sir. Mm. That's not Jesus. Sir. Hey, bros, close down that your pool you have opened because it reveals a limited deity. That's not Jesus. <laughs> That's not Jesus. Jesus has too much healing. Hey, so, too much healing. Too much miracle. He's actually looking for to give me the kutu. Oh my God. And you want to reveal to me a deity that has only one miracle for the year. Ah, one miracle for the day. One miracle for the quarter. <laughs> one miracle for half the year. So, ah, oh, come on. This is not God. This is not Jesus. This is not Jesus. This is an ideology that the devil used to blindfold people from seeing the real, the real person who is Christ. Are we together? So if you cannot help yourself going, you cannot get healed. And there's only more healing for a season. Asha. So you have to get your healing by works, not by grace. And even that healing that you get by works is only for one person. What a limited deity. That has to make people suffer to get what they, 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 they need. But that's not Jesus. Jesus suffered for us. This deity makes people suffer to get. But Jesus suffered for us to get. <laughs> uh, and this deity has only one. But Jesus has more than enough. Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, from this, we see how. A popular belief or superstition, whether good or bad, can stand in the way of our miracle and prevent us from having a miracle. Mm. Are we seeing it? Yes. I'm not saying the superstition is good. I'm not saying it's bad. You see, you see, I'm only presenting. I'm only teaching you. <laughs> it's there for you to run your conclusion. Are you hear what I'm saying? Mm. My job is to teach. Run your conclusion. You are uh, to him that had wisdom. Let him understand what the spirit is saying. Mm. To him that had ear, let him hear. It's as simple as that. I presented, I've taught you what the Lord will have me teach you. You can, don't come and argue with me. I'm not arguing with you. Are you getting what I'm saying? If you want to send a comment, you can send a personal comment to the to 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 to, to our image in the honor mission at email.com. If you want to argue, please I don't have to argue. I only taught you what the Lord said. If you say you don't like it, you are not down with it. No problem. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's your decision still, no. But for me, the Jesus I know does not have one me. One miracle <laughs> per time. The Jesus I know does not make me work for my miracle. He doesn't make me suffer for my miracle. He suffered so I can have the miracle. He worked out my miracle for me. Uh, so, but if the one you want is the one that will make you suffer for your miracle and work for your miracle, you are free. It's your decision. If the one you want is the one that can only give you a miracle, one miracle per per season or per or per year. Or per decade, it's your choice. It's all about our individual choice. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. But just know one thing that a superstitious belief, which has been made popular, can stand in the way of you receiving a miracle from Jesus. This kind of belief is called mental stronghold. Mental what? Stronghold. You see, when Jesus came to meet the man, what do you want me to do? The man began to began to tell him what his belief over the years has done to him. And he has stayed in this place for years, 38 years and also. And because of the 38 years stronghold, mental stronghold, he was face to face with the miracle and he could not see access the miracle. I'm telling you, it's time for us to drop mental strongholds. 
When Jesus is revealed, mental struggles should drop. So stop holding on to what you have been holding on to for years. Jesus is more than enough. And you're not coming here to sir. Look at the church today. Every time Christ is revealed, the devil is agitated. So begin to see people fight Jesus every day. But once we, we are bringing up some superstitious things, we see people are, are, are they're happy. Because people over the years have been satisfied with the mental strongholds. And they have not been satisfied with Jesus. Mm. Jesus said, what do you want? The man, the man began to dis- the, explain his stronghold. And I tell you, my brother, if your stronghold is the only thing you have in your mouth, I tell you to take the mercy of God for you to get your miracle. Are you get what I'm saying? And over the years in church, what we see is people who have strongholds in their mouth. Ah. This is one reason why we must only use the word of God and no other mediums so as not to create strongholds in our minds and that of others. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's, that's why we advocate use the word of God alone. Speak the word. Why? Because you don't know the kind of stronghold you are creating in somebody's mind. You don't know the history of that thing you are going to do. And I don't know the thing to create in a person's mind. Okay, you don't just to so please for us to be on the safest side. Let's speak the word. The centurion told Jesus, Speak the word, and my soul will be what healed. A man who was not born again could understand the power of the word. They said, I'm a man under authority. I said to one, Go and he goes, and to another, come and he come. Jesus, don't waste time coming. Speak the word, and my soul will be healed. A man under authority who was not born again knew the power of the word. He didn't need any mental stronghold. He didn't need anything that would complicate his, his miracle we're looking for. But we who are born again, we are looking for complicated ways of getting our miracles. We are looking for complications. We are looking for different mental strongholds. I remember once, one of my mentees, he said he went to pray for somebody and as he went to the hospital he was trying to pray for the lady but he discovered that she had mental strongholds so there was a bridge there was a there was a rift between his spirit and her spirit and then what happened was that right there she called her pastor said let me call my pastor let me call my pastor and when she called the pastor the pastor told her, she pastor told her he said put get a white handkerchief and put it in water and put it on your head so that's the prayer you are praying for her over here they call it direction Ah, and he looked at her like so. And you know what? And when the devil means to mess up your life, he will make things difficult for you. Over what? When they gave that that direction, there was no white handkerchief around. This was like going around the So you remember that if the girl is at the point of death, if they don't see white handkerchief, she's dead. That is not Jesus. Huh? Ah, he looked at the situation and said, "Kai, mental stronghold. Hey." Till he left, they didn't see what that And that's how bad the devil can be. He said he just prayed a prayer and left because he knew that she had a mental struggle. I had a situation of a particular man who his son was dying. The son was dying. And he's, he put the son inside the car and was driving the son to his pastor's house. The pastor's house was not, was not uh, two feet, sir. Mental stronghold. Because young, the pastor has put a stronghold on his mind. That I'm the one that has to pray for you. I get what I'm saying. But I remember when I was when, when, when I, in the first ministry to preach on a pastor, I traveled um I, and I came back on Saturday to preach on Sunday. So I was tired. It was a five hours journey. I was tired. I needed to rest. Sunday after preaching, one of the um my mentees told me, sir, did you hear what happened to this member? I'm like, ah, what happened? I said, okay, say so let's go and let's go to the house. When we went to the house, the member told me, Oh, Pastor, I was calling you. I said, Say, which one were you calling me? Say, uh, it was this. I said, I don't know that number. I said, it was a daughter. I said, you don't you know your daughter number to call me for now. If your number to call me, I will know. And I was tired. I needed, I was tired, sleepy, tired. I need to wake up that morning. I said, okay, what happened? And then they began to tell me. Said that she was talking with her husband. Talking with her husband. The husband's eyeballs, the black started going up. And the husband's eye, the black went up totally. And that was it. She checked his pulse. She's a nurse. His pulse had ceased. The man had died. He said, they're calling me. And over there, I taught them, and I still teach people to tomorrow. All you need is Jesus. The Jesus in me is the same Jesus in you. So, if you speak it, it will answer the way it answers for me. You don't need me. When she called me and saw that I didn't pick, she remembered the teachings I taught them. And she began to pray. Her husband had died. Talking to her, the husband had died. She began to pray. Every prayer she had in her, she prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. She, I, I don't, I can't remember how long she said she prayed. 
But she saw herself praying. And before you knew it, the man sneezed and came back to life. And he began to tell her his encounter in the world beyond. I'm like, wow, what a testimony. But so imagine if I had not trained my people well, if I had given them mental stronghold, that one would have died. Because pastor being picked, that means it's all over. And you get what I'm saying? <laughs> Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. So we must not create mental stronghold in our mind and the minds of others. Also, when we have created strongholds in our mind, we must cast it down and break it. So it does not prevent us from what? Receiving our miracles. Second Corinthians 10 verse 5, we are ending here. Casting down imaginations and every high thing and exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. I don't know who is under the sound of my voice, but you know that there are mental strongholds in your life that have prevented you from receiving miracles. Are you getting what I'm saying? This moment, you are going to be casting them down. I get what I'm saying. You are going to be casting them down. You have created a bridge, a rift between you and Christ. You are, you are born again, but there are some things that you cannot assess because of mental strongholds. You are going to be casting down the strongholds now. And see, you may not even know the mental stronghold. I get what I'm saying. Last year, the Lord gave. I saw a dream, and I don't. It was clear. It was clear. But when I saw it, I woke up and I was talking to uh, my wife, and I was like, "This is it." The prayers of years, this is final. This has shown that my prayers of years has finally been what? Established. See, when you are praying this kind of prayer, you may not know where the struggle is. See, I've told you, ask your post now. <laughs> and ask your you. you don't, we, we don't know this history before. Some of us may not know the history behind the struggle in our mind. I get what I'm saying. But you have the responsibility to do what? To cast it down. You say, I'm born again. You are born again. Yes, you cannot be possessed by the devil. But you can be manipulated by the devil. Your mind can be manipulated by the devil. And you don't know the history of that mental struggle where the manipulation is coming from. So tonight, you will cast that because you are just a mind away from your miracle. Yes. If your mind can align to the word of God, <clears throat> miracle comes. You are casting down strongholds tonight. You are casting them down tonight. Before we go into that prayer, you, are, you, you understand of my voice. You don't make Jesus your Lord and personal Savior. You just say this prayer to me. Dear Lord Jesus, with my heart I believe, and my mouth I confess that I am my Lord and personal Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord, I pray for everyone who has prayed this prayer. Thank you for receiving them the blood and grant them the grace to save and follow you in the name of Jesus. Now, I'm praying for the sick. You are sick in your body. Put your left hand where you are hurting and lift up your right hand. Let's cause sickness and disease together. In the name of Jesus, we destroy the hosts of sickness and diseases. Amen. We destroy infirmities. Amen. We destroy the de uh, um, deteriorating bodies. Amen. Decaying bodies. Amen. Are still alive. Yes, Lord. We destroy retrogression. Amen. With reprogression. Yes, Lord. This order becomes order. Amen. We decree pains are destroyed. Amen. They are taken away in Jesus' name. Amen. We decree healings, breakthrough, deliverance, signs, and wonders. Yes, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Now you are praying this prayer in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every Jesus. mental stronghold. Every mental stronghold. In my mind. In my mind, preventing me preventing from receiving, from receiving miracles. miracles, I command you, I command be, broken be broken and pulled down. Now, in the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray. <laughs> Now is your moment of salvation. If you are yet to make the Lord Jesus Christ, your Lord and personal Savior. We request that you say this prayer along with many others now. Say this words. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner, I repent of my sins, and ask that you forgive my sins. I believe that you shed your blood on the cross, died for my sins, and rose again in the third day. Today, I invite you into my life today. Wash me by your blood, Make me your own, until eternity be my Lord and personal Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' precious name. For your love gift of any amount to Grace Life Kami Podcast, kindly use any of our giving channels available to give in dollars. You can send to Universal Merchant Bank Ghana. Account number 033 154 551 2013. 
Swift code. M. B. G. H. G. H. A. C. To give in CDs. Universal Merchant Bank Ghana. You can send to account number. 033254551 To give in Naira, you can send to Ecobank Nigeria. Account number 5541020592. Also, for further enquiries, you can call us on plus 233-54594-7132. Or, send us an email via chimdiohahuna ministry at gmail.com. Today, remain ever blessed. We believe you were blessed listening to this teaching from God's Word. May your soul remain ever refreshed and revived. We would love to hear your praise report today. Beloved, remain connected to Grace Life Comey Podcast. Jesus is Lord.